All right, this was going to be a quick video. Um, I thought I'd take give you a quick look at a project called uh, Cargo Expand. If you're not familiar with uh, Cargo, it's part of the Rust ecosystem. It's effectively kind of a package manager. Um, I've been using it frequently in my videos. Uh, you can use it to create new projects, uh, build. It's got a bunch of different commands. Um, things like cargo doc to generate documentation, um, things like cargo testing, uh, builds, running, fix. Uh, you can add a number of different kind of commands to it uh, by calling cargo install. Um, a couple of the ones that are popular are things like uh, cargo clippy. Uh, but the one I'm going to take give uh, give you a look at is this one called Cargo Expand, and Cargo Expand is really great when you have a lot of these macros on top of your uh, like structures and enumerations. Uh, what it'll do is it'll actually expand out the uh, whatever whatever kind of code that is kind of built into the library. So basically macros or things like println um, exclamation mark is a macro derive. Uh, if you looked at some of my old videos, you would have seen the calculator implementation or a lot of the other videos where I'm using the ord trait, uh, things like that. So this will help us give us an idea of like what's actually going on under the hood. Uh, so all you do is you want to install it, cargo install, cargo expand, right? So I already have it installed. And, and then what you can do is you will call cargo expand. You can pass it a particular module and it will output what it implemented. So Whenever you do something like derive debug, that's a what it what it wants to do is create it's a macro essentially to generate the implementation for debug. Um, other things like ord, anything type of trait. So you can see here it's automatically implementing core format debug for this type called s, and you can see how it's doing that. So I'm just looking at the calculator library that I had. So I'm going to call cargo expand calculator. Right. And so that it outputted this nice formatted um, expression. So I might want to increase that a little bit. All right. So looking at, let's say, the operator. And if you remember from the old video, uh, you know, just so here's our operator as it stands. We're deriving debug, partial equal, equal, partial ord, ord, and we want to see what that's actually doing. Right? So Ord, we still have our operator, debug, it's going to call this core format formatter, write string, add, subtract, all div. So that's the debug formatter. For the partial equal implementation, it's calling this core intrinsic discriminant value. So I'm not sure what that is, but I, you know, we can always take a look. So discriminant value, core intrinsic discriminant value turns the value of the discriminant for the variant v. v has no discriminant. So not totally sure what that means yet. So discriminant for an enum would be what? Core mem discriminant. Ah, here we go. So this can be used to compare enums that carry data while disregarding the actual data. 
So memory discriminant foo A, foo B1, etc. So it returns a value, what it says is it returns a value uniquely identifying the enum variant V. Okay, so that's that implementation, and it's just going to do n equals like we would expect. The EQ is hidden in this case, partial ordering, saying discriminant ordering. Ah, I see. So if they're equal, it's just going to call some equal. Otherwise, it's doing the partial compare for these two values. Right. Operator ord. Here's our token. Debug trait builder. It's going to format it by saying number. Grab this our first value. Token number. This one's op, first value, bracket, first character. And then structured equal for token, partial order, derived. So everything else looks pretty much the same. Um, I'd like to expand main now. I'll expand. Let's take a look at that syntax here. I'll just say cargo expand. Ah, here's our main. So you can see here standard IO print core format arguments, etc. etc. Yeah, so anyway, thought that was a pretty good tip. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like these videos, like go ahead and like and subscribe. It kind of helps me sort of maintain some motivation creating these videos. I like creating them. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.